I, I had someone get mad at me for that. Well, you said it on a public platform. Okay, but you said you <laughs> nailed her in, in every room of her house and some places twice. That one, listen, I completely understood where she was coming from. Do you want to apologize to her in case she's still watching? Oh, she's definitely not watching. She clicked off? Oh, 100%. What's she doing with her life now? Better? <laughs> <laughs> Have all of your exes escalated since they've left you? What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 138 of Dropouts. Um, this one's going to be a little bit different. Um, is it Jared had some allegations come out this week? No, I didn't shut up. We're not starting like that. Jared. What? Apologize for what you should say to who to who look down the barrel. Okay. I'm looking down the barrel. Who are you? Sorry to, I don't know women in general. What for? I don't know being misogynistic. I'm not misogynistic. You said you love the wage gap. No, I did. Yeah, you said you're gonna get it tattooed right above your butt. So all everyone can see it when you have an intimacy. And um, who do you like to have intima intimacy with? Women. And so would, you want them to see that. How would they see it if it's above my butt? Because you like getting pegged. Let's hit some intro music. <laughs> oh my God. What's up guys? Huh? Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's see, Day. This is why I don't like being this close to you. Why? Because you physically abuse me. It's called love taps. It's not a love tap. When I look in your eyes and that's, I feel something emotional, I give you a love tap. That's and that's not what make you feel tap, good. Though. That's not a tap. That is like, that's borderline abuse. Okay. You sound like Amber Heard when everyone believed her. All right. <laughs> that's horrible. It's, hor it's horrible what she did to Johnny Depp. Well, yeah. No, oh, we you're all, on Amber's we, side. I'm not on Amber's side. Here we go. It's, I'm just saying a, a tap is like. I'm checking my Apple watch. Okay. What are you checking for? Oh, not good. You've What's, been canceled. For what? Supporting Amber Heard. It I'm came not, out quick. I'm yeah. not supporting Amber yeah. Heard. A lot of hashtags flying around. Oh, my God. And I'm not going to stand behind you. I'm behind wow. my one true captain, That's Jack Sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> what did we do today, man? Uh, we had the pleasure of talking to a couple classes at the University of Southern California. The people wanted to know the information inside of our brains, so... Uh, we went into USC and uh, we we talked to shout out uh, Professor Karen mm -hmm. and uh, we spoke to a couple of her classes and let's just say that uh, we were a class act. A lot of people were saying, "Aha, but um, <laughs> you're so funny, man." Um, and Jared, let's just say, "What did it. I do? What could I?" No, I'm, this was going to be good. At okay. the end of the lecture that we gave, oh, uh, yeah. a girl a girl looked at you and what she say? She uh, she looked at me and she was like, "Hey, what are your uh, what are your Valentine's Day plans?" And what did you do? Uh, I said, <laughs> I said nothing as of yet. And, and then, then, and then, did you get her number? No, yeah. the, did class, you try? the the class ended, and before I could even like get around the podium, she was gone. Yeah, because she have you ever Cinderella? She had to leave the ball. She wanted you to follow her. She dropped her pencil. It was a pencil that I was looking for. Yeah, I was looking for something bigger than a pencil. I was like, ah, oh, maybe she left like her purse or you know, her bag even. Because she was going to teach you the loves about all the little things. Damn, that was good. Yeah, there's, uh, how you doing, Alyssa? What'd you say? I'm so good. Yeah? Yeah. Thank goodness. What'd you do last Valentine's Day? Uh, Did you stay at home? Sad? Yeah. Wishing you were with someone that loved you? <laughs> like most Valentine's, yeah. Have you ever been with a significant other on Valentine's Day? Yeah. What was their name? <laughs> We don't need to name names. Let's name names. I, I don't want to name names. It's a lot more fun when you name names. It's not more fun when you name names. For you. Think about this. <laughs> For you. For all the listeners, it would be a lot more fun if you name names. And then, so one person is put out and that's you. But everyone else would enjoy it better. So do it for the greater good. Can we use code like, names? <laughs> what are we, kids next door? Would you <laughs> kill yourself if it meant the rest of the world got to live? Uh, Yeah. This is kind of the same thing. No, it's not. <laughs> Why? Because the world isn't like in life threatening danger if yes. I don't if I don't say this person's name. But your pain equals everyone else's pleasure. Does that not mean anything? What did to you, you do last Valentine's Day? Let's flip the script. I don't remember. Okay. So, what about the Valentine's Day before that? Um I <laughs> that was a really sad one, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you do that to me? I don't know. Let's name names. <laughs> Let's name names. <laughs> I see what you mean. Once you once I put on your shoes and I walked a mile, <laughs> I need to be more respectful of you and your emotions. I'm really glad that you've finally come to terms with how you treat me. It's and called a character arc. 
It, that's a good character arc. I'm really impressed that you had that within the first five minutes of this podcast. Do you think you and I will ever find actual true love or do you think we're oh, just going to be swiping on hinge till the day we die? No, we're definitely going to find true love. I, I'm a firm believer that there is somebody out there for everyone. I don't know if I... Uh, what if it's the same? What if it's the same girl for both of us? You know um, how you can have multiple soulmates. What if one girl is both of our soulmates? Who gets her? Dibs? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you are is that not hold up? Is that? Uh, I, have I talked about this on this podcast when um, we were behind? We were in line. Yeah, we've talked about this, okay. and it's not. It's one of the scummiest and shadiest things you've ever done. It's to me. not true. Though. Um, for the people that don't know, I one time Jared and I were in line for a play. And uh, I know that makes us sound so sophisticated. Oh yeah. Trust me. <laughs> you don't think I slept that in there right before <laughs> on Valentine's day when they're going to watch this DM. Oh, uh, DM me. If you want to uh, be in love a Valentine's Let's do that day. in the front at Zach justice. Can we put it on the screen like way bigger than everybody else? Yeah. Like, track my head a little bit. Oh, track it on your head. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Um, but, okay. But we were in line. What would you say? This is three years ago. Yeah. Which is crazy to think about. Is it? Um, yeah, time happens. I know. And there were these two beautiful young women mm -hmm. and I know, I know women are objects and property. So the way that I maybe went about this was a little chauvinistic. Is that the word? Um, I don't know if chauvinistic is the right word, but I get what you're saying. And, uh, I called dibs on the blonde one. <laughs> I think that's exactly what I said. I turned around. And I said, I got dibs on the blonde one. And little did I know, Jared didn't tell me, but he went on a date with the blonde I didn't. one. It wasn't a date. Yes, you did. It you went to just, coffee exclusively and didn't tell me about it. It was just friends getting coffee. You're the one that was. Why didn't late. you? Why didn't you? Oh. Know, but, but, but we're not changing stories. It's funny that you didn't um, mention it to me. That, hey, you guys got coffee together. I did no, mention it. Months later. It wasn't months later. I just, you're a little sneaky snake. I It and, wasn't a date though. And you were the one that was like actively, you know, staying up and sending voice memos. You know, like you were actively talking to her. This was just like a let's hang out. Right under my rug. This wasn't a date. If she, in that moment, okay, let's talk about it, baby boy. If while you guys were on your coffee excursion, we'll call it, um, if she leaned in for a kiss, would you have pecked her back? No. <laughs> and that's it where, wasn't, no, it yeah. wasn't a date though. She's a very beautiful woman. Okay. And I'm not going to like, what? What? Don't make that gesture. What? That was, that was chauvinistic actually what's the definition of chauvinistic Can you look up chauvinistic we've been using it really wrong as a person <laughs> chauvinistic is displaying excessive or um prejudiced how do you say that word? there you go <laughs> hey, let's, yeah, yeah. Support yeah. for one's own cause or group in particular showing male prejudice against women yeah we're chauvinistic <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> don't say word i'm not high-fiving you for that you would <laughs> um okay we were using it right then. Okay, what if we do a fun thing? We go out to the streets tomorrow. We go separately, and then we plan a double date. We just go ahead and, Alyssa, create reservations tomorrow at 7 at a beautiful restaurant. Mastro's. And, and then you can afford that? Uh, <laughs> if, like, the four of us are splitting the bill. Actually, six if we bring Alyssa, and she has to find a date, too. That might yeah. be fun. That could be really fun. She would just bring the one guy that ruins no, her life you're not, every time. you're not allowed to bring him. Who? What do you mean? Who? Who do you think we're talking about? Oh, <laughs> oh, <she> goes, oh. <laughs> um, uh, any other topic, please? Oh, your mom's gonna be asking about that, isn't she? <laughs> I'll just bring Wes. <laughs> uh oh, whoa, whoa. whoa. Just a friend, please. It's Valentine's Day. Yeah. Um, okay. No, oh, this forgot. could be a fun challenge. What if we go out? Okay. We create the reservations, so we have to go either way. It's gonna be really sad. <laughs> It's going to be really sad if one of us gets a date and we go and, oh, and really, no. really sad if it's just both of us <laughs> and we're just there. And then it would just be, but it would be a Palentine's day. It do, it has to be somebody you don't know because that's an Ooh. easy way out. I don't know your mom very well. Yeah, but you do know her. I could get to know her better. That um, what? You're done. You're done. Oh, you're just, now you're using TikTok terms. Who are you? I don't what know. are you, a 14 year old girl? You're done. I'm, ru I'm ruined. I'm ruined. It's corrupted my brain. It's just toxic goo up there. Ew. Speaking of toxic goo, let's have ourselves a night tomorrow. Oh, huh? that's disgusting. Zach. It's not, man. Okay. How do you think you were born? Where do, do you, you think, think any toxic goo was involved? <laughs> Where do you think you're going to find your girl? What, what do you, uh, tomorrow or just in yeah, general, like tomorrow. when I finally find love? Um, uh, well, we can talk about tomorrow and then uh, when you just, when you find the, 
soulmate. I'd probably go to Barney's Beanery. Oh my God. <laughs> Just look around. <laughs> like anybody want to find love tomorrow? <laughs> So uh, where would does, you go? Does that mean? Okay. You can't go to the same place. I can't go to no, Barney's. That's the watering hole. <laughs> um, where would I go? Probably like a, a grocery store. How do you feel about the Super Bowl? <laughs> what? How do you feel about the Super Bowl? We went to a Super Bowl party yesterday. We did go to a Super Bowl party. Um, to be honest, it was weird. This was like the one of the first Super Bowls that I really didn't have any like emotional stake in. Mm -hmm. um, and so I felt very detached from the game, even though I love football. Uh, and I was of split minds. Um, I couldn't. I couldn't decide whether or not I wanted the the Chiefs or the Eagles to win, because um, I think I I ended up going for the Eagles, which was disappointing. Um, the Chiefs. My my thinking was, you know, the Bengals lost to the Chiefs. That was soul crushing. Um, and so I wanted. At first, I wanted them to win because I didn't want the Bengals to lose for nothing. Um, and then I realized I was just like, oh man. Mahomes did us so dirty in that game uh, against the Bengals. And so I, I really wanted Jalen Hurts to just crush him. Yeah. And the entire time I was trying to keep myself from telling Madison Beer, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we were focused on two we're very, on two very, very, very different things. things. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But she did bring her dogs and they're the sweetest little people in the world. Oh my God. I felt so bad though, because one of her dogs, um, Bowie, very sweet. They're both doodles or something. I don't know. Oh, I felt really bad, but he was, he was limping. And so like, we're all playing with the dogs and she introduces them that she's like, Oh, this is Bowie and this is Presley. And we're like, why is this one limping? Why is Bowie limping? And she goes, well, he's, he's has cancer. Um, and I told her immediately after that. Oh, sounds like he's got a ticket to God's meet and greet. Sad. And I shouldn't have said that. No, why I'd like to apologize. Why would that be the first thing out of your mouth? I was nervous. Do you think in uh, terms of soulmates, do you think you have multiple soulmates or do you think you have one soulmate? Do you think someone's soulmate was John Wilkes Booth and they were really sad when they found out? It's oh, a hundred percent. Oh man. <laughs> like we only get one of these. Wait, okay. You think we had multiple soulmates? Yeah, I think, I think we have. Um, okay. Run me through this. What do you, when you think of soulmate, happy Valentine's day. Uh, in what con does that mean there's a predestined? So is it your guys' names are written down together somewhere? What do you mean by soulmate? Well, I'm kind of moving towards a more uh, spiritual outlook on life. Since when? Um, and since the last few years. Uh, Why is that? And because I've just experienced a lot of things that, uh, you know, my entire life that has kind of turned me away from organized religion. And I want to find something that speaks to me like in my truest self. Okay. Can you name something? Uh, well, just growing up um, when my, like I have gay parents. And so I've, we bounced around from church to church. It's February. To church. Yeah. Wouldn't they do that in June? What? Be gay. It's not like a timeline thing. You know, it's, you're just, if you're gay, you're just, you're kind of gay. I'm always gay time. in June just because I thought we all had to be. Okay. Um, no, that's not how that works. Oh. I hope you know that. I didn't know that. Okay. Well, now you're educated. I was part of a parade. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Well, you can still be a part of the parade and like show your support. Yeah. That doesn't mean you have to be gay. You can be an ally. I wish I was gay. So I could have a bunch of gay friends and we could go out all out on like a spicy night and then take a really good Instagram picture and, and, and say the pride is on the prowl. Like we're lions. Wouldn't that be hot? <laughs> How the fuck do you think of these things? How do you not? I, I don't know how to explain why I don't think about it. We were on things. a track of soulmates. Oh, yeah. Um, so I don't think there's like a big man in the sky with a book writing down like, oh, this person's going to meet this person, whatever. I just think there are certain people that come into your life to teach you certain things um, about life, about love, about yourself. Um, so do you think that's predetermined? In a sense, Yeah. Okay, kind of run me through that. So if it's not in a book, do you think it's like stored anywhere, that type of information, that are predestined? Are you talking about like a computer? No, not a computer. Like it, if you're saying it's predestined, I feel like the information has to be somewhere. Like who has that information? That's what I don't know. That's okay. like, I, like I'm leaning towards like a spiritual agnostic, right? Like I, um, I want to, like I believe there is a higher power, you know, because, and until the day that they can, you know, dis like they discover what came before the big bang, you know, I know that's just a theory right now, but like before, once they can figure out where all this came from, you know, then my, my beliefs will change. 
But as of now, I, I believe there's a higher power. I, for now, Man I just call woman. that, no, I just call it the universe, right? There's no like gender role assigned to it. Um, Very 2023 of you. <laughs> I just, I, I believe the universe has a, a timeline. I, I look at life like a choose your own adventure book, right? There's certain predetermined outcomes, right? There's, there's a multitude of outcomes that you can end up at based on your life choices and you can go down a lot of forks and roads. And so you can swing so far left and then make that just free will in my head. It it makes more sense to have a combination of free will and predestiny. Why is your predestiny um, something maybe positive while others are like kids that get bone cancer and die immediately? See, that's, that's just what I want. I'm like, that's a genuine question. No, I, I think that's a, a very valid question. I also, um, I don't know if I believe in this fully, but I read a book a long time ago uh, called Many Lives, Many Masters. And it was about a, uh, a psychiatrist, yeah, a psychiatrist that um, puts one of her, uh, one of their patients under hypnotherapy and uh, to deal with like a lot of uh, phobias and anxieties that this patient had that were like crippling to her everyday life. And, um, when she went under hypnotherapy, she started uh, speaking in like different voices and accents and uh, spouting um, all these stories about different lives that she had lived, right? And she would take the her doctor through a bunch of these. Like she was uh, like a child in ancient uh, Egypt and there was a time where she fought in World War One, And so I'm I don't know if I'm a hundred percent a believer of like reincarnation or multiple lives just yet, but I believe there's some, uh, there, there could be some validity to that. And so I feel like each, uh, life you learn. Why do you think there could new. be some validity to that? I don't know. I, I'm okay. going to be honest. It's just what I believe. This is my question. Um, like when a lot of people, some people will die and come back and they'll, and they'll say, Oh, I had this crazy experience. But then we learned that your mind is flooded with dreams when you die. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe, and same thing with psychedelics, is like you're flooded with you know these different type of things, it's different emotions, different hallucinations. But what if the hypnosis was tapping into something like a psychedelic and she just thought that these things were happening when that's they really a, weren't? That's entirely possible. Plausible? Plausible? I don't know. I think you I, just want a little bit of magic in the world or else it's a little bleak for you. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, because that's okay. I mean, we've had like a conversation similar to this um, when I I talk about like I have a fear of dying or a, a fear of death, right? And what comes after it? Not enough to like stop me from doing things. Like we drive in cars every day. That's one of the most dangerous things you can do, um, especially when Alyssa's behind the wheel. <laughs> seriously, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were in the room. I'm a really good driver. That's not apparent. I, not apparently to Jared in the back seat. Does he ever annoy you when he backseat yeah. drives? Okay, sometimes I backseat drive, but that's because Alyssa misses exits. Oh, wait, a lot of times? A lot of times, yeah. Well, yeah, you guys should talk about it. Stop, Get into it. Stop <laughs> missing exits, and then I'll, 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 Alyssa. Stop, I'll stop backseat driving. No, it's not just when you when I miss exits. It's also when I can need to get over it or I'm going too fast or slow or I've never commented on that on the fast or slow. It's in it's, my head. I do <laughs> a little bit of animosity. Love it. <laughs> Conflict causes people innately to look, you know, if you're in a store and someone starts yelling, you look okay. Same thing on this podcast, that little, you know, that was calculated. Oh, was now it? People are listening. Cool. Yeah, they love the turmoil. Awesome. Humans are fascinating, aren't we? Um, but you were talking about your existential anyway, crisis. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just like we've had conversations about that. Like I have a fear of death and mm-hmm. mainly the fear is that there's nothing after death. Mm-hmm. Right. And you've told me, you're like, what was it like in 1879? And it's like, I don't know. And it's like, that's probably what death is like. And while that's, that's true, that is like, that's terrifying to me. Do you think that, it's a little egotistical to think that you could not exist? I don't think it's egotistical to think you could not exist. It's just scary. Why is it scary? If there's, n- you weren't scared in 1814. Yeah, when you didn't because exist because you couldn't be scared. So you can't be scared when you're dead. Yeah, but you can be scared of the fact that you're no longer going to exist. Yeah, yeah. That's but the what, outcome is not going to change. That's 
Like Again, I think feel like people are scared me. when like eternal darkness. I don't just want to be in eternal darkness. It's it's like no, you're not even conscious that you're in eternal darkness. Oh fuck, dude! I can feel myself sweating starting a little to bit. have a panic attack. This have is, one? Why not? Actually, one of the few like I, I've only ever had a handful of actual panic attacks, and one of them was when I was in class in college. Actually, this was my first one. Uh, I was in class in college, and we were watching a, a film. And it opens on like a funeral scene. And for some reason, it just got me started like thinking about death and whatever, this exact conversation. Um, I do see myself at your funeral. Okay. I hate when you say that. Why? I Great speech. You want to hear mean, it? Because that either... <laughs> no, I don't want to hear it. I have it written down. I've already written it and just figured it's going to happen. Okay. That's really sad. What are we going to do about rent? I don't know. You're the breadwinner. You figure it out. We're not married. But we could be, especially in this day and age. Thanks, Obama. Is he the one that did it? Yeah. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, somehow we got on to death uh, when I was trying to talk about soulmates. But I just think there's certain people that, like, I think the soulmates come into your life to teach you things about, like, all these different categories uh, to make you a better person. And then uh, when you're ready, you meet the one. I'm not trying to play devil's advocate to be an a-hole, but maybe the human conscious existence is learning and then proceeding to use that information to change. So maybe you're perceiving it as any kind of predestiny, but you're just a human who soaked up information from a relationship and it didn't went, it didn't go well. So you adapted, which is human nature and that which caused you to change rather than they came in my life to teach me something, or maybe they're just in your life and you learn something rather than them teaching you. I think I just like to romanticize <laughs> life. No, you I know? know, I know. I'm just, and I think it makes. I think it's more interesting if you think about it? it. For me personally, okay. Rather than imagine just like living in a world. I mean, I guess you kind of do, but just like living in a world that is so cold and calculating, and there's no like. I get a sense of warmth from the fact, that, like thinking about Alyssa. things were meant to happen, or um, what? He's sucking on a sucker. Okay. You take your job professionally, man. <laughs> no, no you can eat you're it. allowed to eat it. Yeah, you can eat it. You no, I just I just think before. I just think it makes life more interesting than just being, you know, so cold. You think I'm cold? Uh I think you have tendencies to be cold ah. in calculating, which isn't a bad thing. Very political answer. You didn't you didn't generalize me, but you No, because you're also I you have moments where you like to romanticize life. Name six. <laughs> I hate when you do that. <laughs> Before we continue, we want to give a big thank you to our sponsor, BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash dropouts and get on your way to being your best self. You know, in my life, I've struggled with a lot of depression. I've struggled with a lot of dark thoughts, sad things. And uh, for a long time, I didn't get help with it. And you know what happened to my mental state? What happened? It stayed in a consistent mental state of sadness and depression. Who would have thought? Uh, this is an analogy I, I like to always give. You go to the gym for your body. Uh, you eat you eat healthy for your body, but why don't we do that for our mind? Why don't we have those positive thoughts of talking to someone else and, 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 and work out our mind in such a way that we do at the gym? So I think of therapy as the gym for your mind. And even if you aren't going through the struggles right now, it's also, it's, it's like a tune up. It's like getting your oil changed. It's, it's talking about your life. So you don't fall into those patterns of depression or not even depression, anything you're really going through. It's someone to bounce things off of. It's, it's just an all inclusive place to keep your mind a healthy and strong place. And I couldn't recommend it better and better help has been one of the key things in my mind to kind of changing my mental state. It's not as scary as um, going in person. So it's like a good place to start and continue of going online, finding a licensed professional. You can do whatever you want, be in the comfort of your own home, in your room, in your safe space, and then be able to talk to someone who can really help you through um, your problems or just stay consistent in your positive life. So if you're thinking about giving therapy a try, better help is a great option. It's convenient, it's easy, it's flexible, and it's entirely online. Like Zach said, you can do it all from inside your own home, inside your own room even, whatever you consider your safe space. You don't have to leave it. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and get on your way to being your best self and continuing down this mental health journey. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can honestly get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash dropouse to get 10% off your first month. That's better 
H E L P dot com slash D R O P O U T S to get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com. Thank you, BetterHelp. Before we continue, we want to give a big thank you to our sponsor of this episode, Blue Chew. Hell yeah! Who's out there bumping uglies? Who's out there getting thick with it, huh? Who's out there just knee deep in some booty cheeks? Hopefully you, okay? And if you want to do it the right way, if you want to have a good time, how about bluechew.com, huh? Guys, you already take performance enhancers for the gym or to grow your hair like me. So why not take something that can enhance something that's already good, like sex, and make it better for you and your partner? We're talking clapping cheeks on the beats. You know what I mean? I think. A little bit of heat between the sheets. Now I know what you're talking about. I'm talking about. about getting down on repeats. Ooh. Because you got that blue chew. You ready to screw you. We already know we're about to lose crew. We already know we're about to, I can't rhyme anymore, but just know you're going to have good sex, all right? Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. And now they also have Verdenafil mint flavored chewables are you kidding me with the active ingredients of levitra and stacks in to keep you hard and fresh you ever wanted to be hard in your life jared a lot of times yeah. you are but have you ever been fresh while doing it no i've never been fresh now you can be hard and fresh huh Ooh. this makes me want to maybe make a move on you blue chews tablets are a performance enhancement for the bedroom and can help men gain confidence when it's time to perform blue chew is an online prescription service you don't have to go to the doc and be all awkward and be like hey i want some like pills to help with my sex and he's gonna be like wait you're having sex you don't even look like you've ever even seen a, a coitus experience in your entire life and now you don't have to experience those awkward situations because you can get it online bluechew.com that's right it's all done online at bluechew.com you take a free consultation with one of their licensed medical providers and once you're approved you'll receive your prescription within days and here's a special deal only for our listeners you want to try it out for free go to bluechew.com type in code drop out d-r-o-p-o-u-t no s just drop out and all you gotta do is pay for five dollar shippings for a very very free sample thank you blue chew for sponsoring our podcast so if you had a button in front of you okay if you press like there there is an answer and one button is there's no such thing as predestiny. And the other one is there is predestiny. And if you guess wrong, your entire family's killed. Which one are you pressing? Oh, fuck, dude. <laughs> I, w I do want to know which one you're pressing. Because I think deep down, you don't think there's predestiny, but you do like to romanticize everything. Let's get into it, huh? Oh, <laughs> huh? Because there is a right answer. And I'm not saying which one. Like, we, we don't know. But which one would you? Here's the thing. I'm not. I'm thinking about it statistically now. Right, like like you said, um, I just need an answer. For the sake of my family, I would hit that. There's no predestiny. Okay, so you're lying to yourself. All right, what's no. up, Alyssa? We got some my questions this week. What's going on? God, hey, hey. get a little closer to the mic, baby girl. <laughs> I am. I can hear myself. I am. I swear. <laughs> um, so this Free. Valentine's Day, we asked you guys to email us at dropoutsadvice at gmail .com. Yes, sir. Uh, and we're going to try to give you some Valentine's Day love advice. Let's see if we got... Uh, hit us with a question, Alyssa. What do the people have to say? Well, they there's not really any questions per se. It's just kind of... They're just sharing their worst or best Valentine's Day. Oh, let me hear it. Then okay. we'll give our opinions. And, but he's currently in an amazing relationship. Uh, but two years ago, he had a girlfriend. To, so two years ago, I had a girlfriend. And we had planned on going to the movies for Valentine's Day. I got a roses and a box of chocolates and candy. Classic. We go to the movie and everything was great until I had to go to the bathroom. I left for maybe three minutes max. And when I came back, she was making out with someone in our seats. I was so confused and incredibly sad. So I just left and she texted me where I went. So the next day I went to her house to end things. Okay. Whoa. That, that I, just gave me PTSD, like deja vu. That's very similar to my cheating story. I'm just going to think that she didn't know the guy next to her. <laughs> How did she pull that off in such a short amount of time? Like that's what that's what we need to study here. Seriously, yeah, that cheating happens, heartbreak happens. We, you know, let's talk about how this girl sealed the deal within three minutes. She's like she should a write a book. Yeah, like a, a a pickup artist book. Or uh, she was blind and thought it was him. I don't think that was it. Why? I don't think it was necessarily the blind thing. I could see it being really dark in the theater, and maybe she well, did. It's dark know. everywhere if you're blind. Okay. <laughs> 
Fair point. Well, technically it's not dark. Well, it depends on your kind of blindness. Anyway, I don't know where I was going with this. I lost my train of thought. You threw me off. I'll throw you anywhere. Against a wall, against my bed, break it, go on top of you. It's Valentine's Day. I've got, I brought syrup. You say I'm not Canadian. I said, shut up. I kiss you slowly. Take off your shirt. Pull on one nipple and just enough for a little milk to come out. Turns out males do lactate. I put a little bit in my cereal. We have ourselves a night. What do you say? That sounds like an awful time. Jared, it sounds like a risk that we should take. Mm-mm. Anyway, next. This is a person's last Valentine's Day with their now ex-girlfriend. They were at a restaurant and they wanted to go to their, their place afterwards, but she had to go to the toilet first. Um, I had already paid and everything and waited for her. She left her phone with me and I wanted to play Candy Crush. Uh, so she got a message and I wanted to check it out and found out that she had been cheating on me for seven months. We were together for a year. I confronted her about it and she screamed at me saying that I had no right to go through her phone and then drove away with my car and left me there. I'll do that. Oh, okay. So she committed grand theft auto (laughs) after her, after cheating on him. There's a silver lining. What? At least it wasn't eight months. (laughs) Yeah. It sounds like you dodged a hoe. Yeah. Um, you got to bob and weave a hoe. You got to slip that, sl- slip the, slip the right hook hoe, you know? Hearing that story, I, I'm now trying to think, I guess it's hard to, to learn in that situation, everything about the relationship. Um, but I'm trying to think of like in the terms of the predestiny and multiple people, whatever, coming in your life for a reason. It's like, what lesson do you think she was supposed to teach him? Um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to, I think I just disproved my own point there. Have you ever gone through a significant other's phone? No, never. Why? Because trust I'm, them? Because you've only been in healthy relationships? Uh, Bold. I don't know if it's necessarily trust. Uh, well, no, no, no. It's not that I don't do or don't trust them. It's just that I, that's regardless, that's an invasion of privacy that like I don't have, I've never had anything to hide from a significant other on my phone, but I still wouldn't want them going through it asked? without my knowledge. Um, no, no one's ever like asked to go through my phone. Is it because you think you're trustworthy? I know I'm trustworthy. <laughs> <laughs> What's another one? I had been dating this guy for about a year and thought we were so in love. I found out maybe two to three weeks before Valentine's Day that he was actually happily married with kids and was hiding from both of us what he was doing. Um, so she found out, booked a really nice dinner and realized that went on his phone and saw that he was on Tinder. So she invited a bunch of the girls that he matched with on Tinder to the restaurant. Oh yeah. Um, Oh my God. And, uh, yeah. She said that he never seen color drop from someone's skin so quickly, stood there in silent and then just walked away. Yeah. That's what you got to do. Dude, that's that's like, that's like a movie. That's like a movie, Jared. That's what you got to do. That's a best way I've ever heard of someone handling like a cheater. But then unless he just had an orgy afterwards with all of them, I don't think then what if he won? I don't think that's how that played out. Well, it was me and that's how it played (laughs) out. So it it was a good time for all of us, except for the girl. How many were there? 18. They were were all above 18. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. My lawyer is just in my head. Okay, Um, cool. How many uh, girls were there? uh, Too many to count, I think. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. There were also um, some shorter ones that people uh, sent in from the Instagram story that we put up. This one, uh, it says, my ex-girlfriend broke up with me on Valentine's Day. It happens. A week after my mom's funeral. Oh, gosh. That's Maybe that. she was just in it for the mom. Maybe the mom made really good cookies or she was really a light to her situation and she's like oh if i have to stick it out with this guy to hang out with the mom then i will but now that the mom's gone what's the point that's a very dark way of looking at it yeah i really hope that's not the case it could be actually okay so when i posted the story i said best and worst no one no one submitted any best stories (laughs) i would have thought who i i was hoping we could get some romance uh in here um, this one says my ex-boyfriend once said he couldn't be my Valentine because he already asked someone else, uh, and then took that girl out and said, it's not cheating. It's just dinner. And then later, uh, found out that she had, that he had been cheating on her, uh, cheating on 
the original girlfriend with her the entire time and she broke up with him after. Well, of course. Bold move to say it's not cheating, it's just dinner. Yeah, these guys out here, they're evolving. I, I think devolving is the right word. Well, you, th you think there's a certain level of toxicity and then the male species, they'll figure it out. They'll figure out how to break you a little bit. The little devil bit works hard, but the male species works harder. The de girls are ruthless too. I don't want you to think they're out here just being sugar plums and sweetness, all right? They'll come for your throat. <laughs> this person said uh, they spent Valentine's Day uh, trying to figure out if they were cousins or not because Tinder doesn't show last names. Hell yeah. No, that's now that's an investig that's clue. That's an investigation I get that's behind. Clue. It was their Uncle Terry in the living room. What what's the statistical probability of um something wrong with your child? Oh, it's extremely low. With a cousin? Yeah. First? Yeah. It's look actually at, can you look up the statistics? No, we've looked this up before. Have we? I want to see the percentage. Like it's it's actually a lot lower than people think if you have like I mean, this is obviously it's still gross, but why like, is it gross if it, there's nothing you know what I mean? Well, it's still a family member. But I, I feel like the the common misconception is that you're gonna have like sloth from the Goonies come out. Uh, In reality, really a pre med major, <laughs> <laughs> a lawyer. Approximately two to three percent chance that their child is born with a birth defect, general genetic syndrome, or disability. Two to three percent. I like my chances. Oh God, no! What? I'll roll the dice on that. No, it's still your cousin. Okay, if there was a wheel that had 2% chance of you dying and 98% chance of you getting $20 no, billion. Dollars, would not, you, but would you? Oh, would you spin that wheel? Probably. Exactly, man. Yeah, but that's- Let's roll the dice on our cousins. No, I'm not Why? rolling the Come dice. Because it's still your cousin. What if we, okay, what if I get your cousin, you get mine? That's fine. Lucky. <laughs> your cousin's great. <laughs> what did you think about Rihanna's halftime performance? Oh my, an icon. At just a living. I'm so attracted to her. And it's funny because in no lifetimes would I ever be able to come close <laughs> to her. But I first fell deeply in love. The work music video. Oh. When she's like dancing with Drake. Oh, yeah. And it's like, it, it's got that like <sighs> sensual red lighting, right? Like I've had, a, I think it's purple lighting, if I remember correctly. Something. It's, it, um, but I, I mean, I had a sexual awakening, but nothing like that. <laughs> I realized in that moment. Like I definitely like women. <laughs> and if you had to put a statistic on it, what percent chance do you think I have of taking her from ASAP Rocky? <laughs> uh, 0.01%. That is so much higher than what I've given myself. Really? And that's not bad. That's a, a hundredth of a percent is higher than you would have given. Yourself. I use hand sanitizer. I still get the flu sometimes. <laughs> I'm out here working. <laughs> But it was honestly one of the coolest parts about it was obviously she was doing, you know, snippets of all of her like big songs. It was cool to see, like, obviously she's one of the the biggest artists um, of like our generation or like of our time, but it was cool to hear how she actually really like defined a generation of music, you know, just like all of her songs all the way from like, umbrella to you know her um her anti-album sorry i get lost in my own thoughts sometimes okay what were you thinking about um starting a podcast with a friend well two guys and a really hot girl and then call it two nickels and a dime that's a great yeah, i know huh no one take that that's, that's <laughs> yeah, no one write it that's trademarked yeah write it down if you write it down your computer nobody can take it that's a, that's how uh media law works okay this is the last little valentine's thing we'll we'll say okay this person said a girl I was seeing was supposed to be taking a picture of me with my phone and instead decided to go through my text messages with my friends and saw that I told my best friend that we had sex the day after it happened. And I told another one of my friends that she can be a nightmare to deal with uh, through text, but great in person. She broke up with me on the spot in the restaurant. Wait, why, why was she mad? Well, because he was... So he told uh, his best friends they had sex. Like, yeah. You tell your friend if you have sex with someone. That's not bad. But I could feel, I could see how she might think that's like an invasion of privacy. Really? A little bit. Yeah. Anytime I mean, you've had people, sex, people, you've told me. Yeah. And remember, I, I had someone get mad at me for that. Well, you said it on a public platform. Okay. But you said you <laughs> nailed her in, in every room of her house and some places twice. 
And then you finished on her face. Oh okay, God. I didn't add that detail. Uh, off the podcast you did, and that's <laughs> disgusting, all right? That one, I listen, I completely understood where she was coming from. I thought I was in the clear because I didn't uh, say any identifiable details about her. Um, but, yeah, that was that was a bad one. That was, yeah. I understood why she was mad about that. You want to apologize to her in case she's still watching? Oh, she's definitely not watching. She clicked off? Oh, 100%. What's she doing with her life now? Better? <laughs> Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Have all of your exes escalated since they've left you? Not all of them. Ooh, which one's doing bad? I'm not going to name but names. But you've got a name. Do you get a lot of play from this podcast? No. Like, do you get girls that'll DM you? Like, oh, what are you doing? Do you get play from this podcast? No. Uh, no you've no. you've shown me some DMs. I don't get, I mean, I get, I, I think mine are mostly jokes, you know? Like, I don't think they are. Mine are mostly like, I'd love to have intellectual conversation no they're not relate to each other you've shown me these dms jared i'm sure you could pull one up right now no yes. no yes a lot of girls want me want to call me the other term for father how and does I, that make you and feel I've never well i've never had a child so i don't think any of them are mine personally okay we're two single guys give us some play should we say that no if you if you stay to this part um uh have your hottest friend or cousin uh, DM us and that would be great and then maybe we could have a relationship by the next podcast that'd be nice I guess I don't think I want to rush into anything that's one thing I, I'm doing we like tens holy hell <laughs> Jared why not if we're going to put it out there why not go for the highest bidding because that that's a horrible way of saying that what do you what should we say we like <laughs> tens <laughs> no yeah. no baddies that's a bad respectable women that are beautiful there we go if you know any respectable women that are beautiful, have them DM us. What, okay, what's a resolution that you have kind of going forward in your love life? Like, for example, I've realized that I need and want to take things much slower. Yeah, yeah, you do. Holy hell, man. You're just like, <laughs> do we have any more nosks? <laughs> you know? You're fast. Um, I am furious. I think uh, just really having that mental connection. You okay. Know, having someone that I feel like I can have conversations with and and really be on the same wavelength mm -hmm. um, in our mindset. And just someone who's kind, thinks about others, thinks about me, does little things. I like cookies. And chocolate lava cake from Chili's. <laughs> Dude, what was that? I'm Are you so sick? sick of that. Why? I don't know why. I don't know. Can you pull up like relationship or like Valentine's questions or something? Yeah. Um, how do you feel about women paying the bill? Uh, the first date, I would prefer uh, to pay for the bill. Agreed. Um, you know, in a very primal way, it makes me feel like, I don't know, the man. on The, the man. <laughs> like, like, I don't know. It makes me feel like I... Took you out on a date. Okay. Uh, um, I guess just well, my mom, how she raised me, she's like, you always pay on the first date. Um, and then that's, after that, please pay as much as you want. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's go 50-50 so on everything. No, but if I, again, but again, I actually don't believe that fully. I think whoever asked the person out should pay. That's, that's what I was going to say. Um, so if like a girl asked me on the first date and she's like, I asked you out, I'm paying. Then I would let her. But if I asked her out, I think I'm obligated to pay because I was the one that asked her out. Even if she asked me out on the first date, like you said, like if she offers to pay, you know, I would still contest her on that. Um, but if she was very adamant against it, you know, I, I would uh, let her pay because I, I feel like that's kind of like a good mantra or I don't know. Yeah. Way to live when it comes to the dating world. It's like whoever asked the other person on a date um, is usually the one that pays. You look like your nickname in middle school would be shin splints. Fuck you. I'm just saying. What's the next one? That's so disrespectful. Um, so do men actually care about Valentine's Day? I, read I do. A, I read a study that it said over 50% of women said that they dumped a guy if they didn't get them anything for Valentine's Day. Wow. Oh, I don't think it has to be a present. I think just an, a nice night. I, I know a lot of people are like, it's just a Hallmark holiday for America to make more money based on capitalism. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so is Christmas. But, you know, <laughs> it's it's fun. It's a little day of the year where everyone gets to feel like a little bit of a love bug and 
Take, show, show a little extra love. Show a little extra love. Why not? And so uh, one day reminds all of us as a population, sometimes we need it. And it's like, well, you should just be doing that all the time. It's like, yeah, you should. But also it's fun to celebrate the little things as humans that we've created, these little traditions together. So I, I think, man, or at least like in my mindset um, and what I've experienced is that we don't necessarily care about it to the extent of like we want a huge extravagant day with just like everything planned out and uh and you know these big grand gestures of love but i think just like each partner showing just a little more appreciation is always just wake up with a hershey's kiss and a normal one why not huh yeah. what's the next one Alyssa? keep these, them going rapid fire these two kind of go hand in hand but what's your best physical feature and what makes you feel sexy what the hell? Whoa. I, I got Is this a GQ online. ad? <laughs> um, what is your best physical feature? My smile. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> what does that mean? Imagine you're with your significant other and you say like your best physical feature, they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I would be crushed. Yeah, you like, would be crushed. Soul. Like, David Archuleta. Um, my best physical feature, I don't know. What would you say is mine, Alyssa? Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I think your eyes. Ooh. I'm trying to catch a vibe. Eyes, eyes are the window <laughs> to the soul. Weirdly. My door is so close to yours, Alyssa. <laughs> Feel free to pop in and pop out. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, Zach. Um, you can't say that. Yeah. So I guess my eyes. My, what makes you my feel brown sexy? brown eyes. <laughs> what makes you feel sexy? Nothing makes me feel sexy. <laughs> Nothing makes you feel sexy? No. Like I've never, I've never been like, I feel so sexy right now. Have you? When I get dressed up in like a, a sharp suit, I feel sexy. You're like, oh, I'm sexy. I don't think I look in the mirror and call myself sexy. Yeah, but, I've never been like, "Oh, you're looking sexy today." But I think when, it, when like when you get dressed up in a in a nice suit. What about what what makes you say you're in a relationship or uh, we have a control group of a girl, but you can like what makes her elevated sexiness when she dresses up when she dresses down like, like I mean if you have I a girlfriend think, like what's a, when are you like oh she's sexy. Like, I think it's both ends of the spectrum, right? I think when you dress up really nice and you're going, say you're going out to like a nice dinner or something. You're like, that's, she's looking sexy, you know, and she's got, uh, she's got like a pretty dress on and she, uh, she's done her makeup and really it's nice, sitting. you know. And what? And that thing's sitting. What is that thing? That's some song, right? I don't know what you're talking about. That song where it's like, in it, like a little black dress and it's sitting. You wouldn't get it. You're not, you don't know anything about women, but keep going. Um, and then I think also the, the opposite end of that is true. Like when you're just, if you're just having like a lazy day at home, you think she's sexy and you think she's like, oh, she's adorable and cute. Uh, uh I'm talking about sexy. You're like, man, my girl looks sexy. Then, okay. Well, yeah, I guess sexy is when, when they also get like dressed up. I personally don't think, uh, women have to dress up for the man's gaze. Oh my God. <laughs> Shut the hell up. Okay. Next. How do you feel about PDA? I love it. Well, do you? To, well, like not. I try to touch you so many times. Okay, you're like the love taps you were giving me in the beginning. That's not PDA. That's that's public display of abuse. Okay. Oh, here we go. No, but just like I'm a very physical touch person. So is your love language? Yeah, I didn't know all that. You didn't know that? <laughs> no. No, I love like when you when you are like out with your significant other, like holding hands or if you're sitting next to each other, you know, even if you just have like your knees touching or something like I. Oh, there's nothing better when you're kind of like you're not really you're talking, but you're not talking to someone. But oh, you guys I both catch a vibe and you're sitting next to each other on a couch and like one of your body parts like barely touches, but neither of you will move. Oh, <laughs> and it's oh. sick. And you're just like, because you both, best feeling. you're both, and you're like, you, you both, this is what love feels like. <laughs> oh, it's, the, it's the little things. It really is the little things. Yeah. What's the best compliment you've ever received? I can't believe it hits your kneecaps. Oh, that's disgusting. Wait, okay. What hits your kneecaps? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? And what are you talking about? What are you talking about? A cock. That's okay. That's what I thought you were talking about. That's why I said it was disgusting. It's, why is it disgusting? A sexual organ is disgusting? Uh, it's disgusting to say it in that crass of a way. Why are we so taboo about this? It's just bodies. I don't think it's about being taboo. Okay, what is your most lovable thing you've... What, what was it? The best compliment. Yeah, what's your best compliment you've ever gotten? I don't know. I have a nice smile. Really? 
I see what I mean? Wouldn't that be the worst? Um, the actual nicest compliment I've ever gotten. You make me feel safe. The, the way that that just like warmed my heart was I felt like the Grinch. Like I felt like my heart just grew three sizes. Yeah, that felt good. What about you? The smile thing still? What's, what's another one? What turns you on? Emotional intimacy. That's why I don't like one night stands. Because mm. I, I, in order to like actually enjoy having intercourse with somebody, I have to feel emotionally connected to them. Who did you say you're most emotionally connected to in this room? Uh, none of you in that way. <laughs> All right. Uh, what am I most attracted to? What am I? What, what turns you <laughs> on, dude? <laughs> I think a perky butt and some jeans, you know, <laughs> or or in like a, a dress, like a like a sundress. Yeah, really, just a, a perky butt in general. Like that's nice. So you're a butt guy. Yeah, but I'm also, you know, I don't I don't mind a good 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 old bosom as well. Is that, those the those are your breasts. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love oh, a good bosom. Bosom. I think I'm more of a face guy. Like if it was. If I had to choose between face, like at any of the three amigos, I'd choose <laughs> any of the. Yeah, I think I'm more of a face guy um, than I would need the butt or the other thing. Do you like, like when girls make the first move? A hundred percent. Like when that girl asked me, what are your Valentine's Day plans? I thought she was about to ask me out. <laughs> and I was like, this is everything I've ever wanted. Would you have gone on a date with her? hundred percent. Wow. Maybe you should watch this. Hopefully. All right, thank you guys so much for listening and watching this podcast. If you stayed till the end, um, please DM me and Jared about being our Valentines or telling your send us beautiful friends or send whatever. us like a, a picture of those Valentines cards. Okay, like the the little ones you That's take fun. out. Um, if you want to subscribe, you can. Apparently, you're supposed to be saying that. Oh, and uh, buy the shirt. Tell, show them. Here we go. Buy it. We we got merch. Super, and we get money for so if you guys buy it, we get to pocket some of the money. So and not a lot of it, but you know it's a super cool design, and so you, we get the money. Okay, that's not. Important. Then we could buy stuff. It's a it's a very high quality T shirt. We made sure we tested a bunch of them uh, to make sure we were getting we you guys the three. best one. That's a bunch. I feel like a bunch is four and above. All right. I feel like a few is three. We tested a, a few. few we tested a few. We, we like this one. We tested a few, and the one we really liked was out of stock, so we went with this one. Was it? Yeah. Ah, oh, shit. I like this one too, though. Oh, this one's great. <laughs> this one's good. I thought this was the one that we really liked. It's fine. Yeah. It still fits great. If you want to shoot this fine, get this one. <laughs> That's what we're trying to say. Also, we get money from Shop it. Shopdropouts.com. It's Don't on the tell screen. Them. They can figure it out. Bye. Adios. Beam me up, Scotty. Cool shades. Cheers. Their headphones. That's going in.